Well, greetings. Welcome to my top 10 videos for July. Before we get started, pardon me. Hmm, different. Before we get started, I want to tell you I'm smoking uh, my first bowl of Frankenstein blend that I just created <laughs> in the lab. <laughs> uh, not bad, actually. Little tone FIFA here. Okay, well, let's begin, shall we? Our first video comes to us from the one, the only, the Bolafont. This is called Therapy. Hey, Doc. Remember that dream I was telling you about? Hmm. It's, it's, it's quite well. Quite well. Yeah, well... I'm having that dream again. But this time the big cigar is talking to me. It's barely audible because of the echo, but I can make it out. And he's clearly saying, Space Bacon. I see. And how does this make you feel? How does it make me feel? I don't know. I just feel like everybody hates me. Ha! <laughs> My boy, that's pure nonsense! Really? Of course! Not everyone's met you yet. Nice. Well, our next video comes to us from a man in Scotland named Jeju7. And here he uh, explains that uh, Hell of the Wind is not really Hell of the Wind at all, it's Hell of the Wind. And he gives us Second a wonderful video, history lesson. Hell of the Wind. Let's give this a watch. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. In the year 1396, King Robert III visited Perth. He had already sent two of his earls north to try and resolve a dispute between two clans. Now, we don't know whether a dispute was between two clans within Clan Chatton or Hatton, uh, which included um, Macintoshes, uh, McPhersons, McGilvrays, Davidsons, and some others or whether it was part of an ongoing blood feud with Clan Cameron, which had lasted 300 years. I'm sure he would have been proud to have had such a great tobacco named after him. But then, in 1396, he wouldn't have known what tobacco was. Our next video also See? comes from Scotland, and this is... Uh Tamper Peterson, and he's talking about the similarities between Orlick Golden Sliced and, uh, and Stokeby's uh, Bullseye Flake. And uh, also, he winds up this beautiful uh, little video in the woods with a little song uh, called The uh, Swallowtail. Let's give this one a listen to. So, if anybody has any information on that, um, any more information, I'd be interested to know, because I actually think he's right. Because, uh, anyway, um, just a, just a quick hello to everybody, and I thought that seeing as I'm here, I'd do a do a video for my whistle channel. Doug, I'll give you this ball in a minute. Down. So, can you down? Yeah. I need to play with Doug because he wants to play. So. I'll end the video here after I smoke some more of this with a, a jig played on a, a Clark's whistle called the Swallowtail Jig. So thanks for listening, folks. Happy puffing.
Okay, and our next video... Hmm. Our next video uh, comes to us from the Reverend M. Brewer. He also keeps our videos kind of in a melodious uh, mode here as he is known as now the Singing Cigar Man. Watch this one, folks. Le aroma de Cuba, mi amore, mi amor. I get my wife to crack up over here. She's gonna lose it. <laughs> You're welcome. So, but again, being 316, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, and absolutely, when I have the proper libation. Uh, to enjoy with them. Uh, I will smoke these thinking not only of you, but of the good friends and good people that I met uh, in a hard place um, where I had to live for about three years. So thank you very much. As always, y'all, keep them pipes lit, keep them cigars lit, and may God bless you. Our next video comes to us from Smoke Ring Dreams, and he's talking to us how to light the cigar using the Kel method. Check this out. The Kel method. I'm just gonna light the, the lighter and we're just gonna put it close to the edge like this. Kind of have it an angle again. You see that or not? This works good if it's kind of windy outside. The flame will actually kind of lick up and try to touch the edge like that. The purpose of this is just to get the edge toasted. Kind of burn the edges a little bit. And the only nice thing about doing it this way. Uh, without tilting like this, is you're not going to get any, any any smoke or any kind of you know impurities going up inside your cigar. Some folks recommend that you uh, you uh, don't cut your cigar while you do this. You wait wait till this is done. But for reasons I'll, I'll explain later, I like having my cigar cut in advance a lot of times. It's getting there. We'll blow out a little bit of the cigar. Be yeah, toasty. All right, Drugs, that's it. Have a good one. Hope you're enjoying your life and enjoying your cigars, or enjoying your cigars and enjoying your life, because that is what it's all about. Talk to you later. Our next video entry that caught my eye this month was uh, an older entry by Tom, Northwest Pipe Smoker, and has an interesting way of just uh, talking Most about uh, life and in the Pacific Northwest, and also just some interesting philosophical things. Here he's talking about kind of his the man the code. Give this one a listen to. He's acting like a temperate rainforest again, yeah, instead of a frozen wasteland. Oh, it could have been a lot worse. We didn't have any snow with that last cold snap of about a week. Otherwise, we did last year. Oh, that was a mess. How warm it feels. I'll take the rain. So it's almost Christmas. Uh, we had a uh, Christmas cookie exchange at the office. A lot of people got in it this year. Ten dozen cookies. That's a baker's dozen, 13. So it got me thinking. Uh, last night I saw some of my redneck buddies, and they, they were saying, Cookies? You make cookies? Accusingly, you know, like I had violated the man code. You know, I'm a single guy. If I don't do it, nobody does it. So, yeah, I house clean, too. Yeah, I do laundry, too. So I don't have a female slave. Okay, I'm fine with that. It makes me, uh, we had a good laugh about it actually. Um, it makes me realize how men spend, I'm telling you, every waking moment making sure that they're following the man code. In fact, he's sort of notorious for um, get, getting a few beers under him and uh, just taking random swings at people. <laughs> so it's like, oh, 
Ryan, have you had anything to drink? <laughs> so, anyway, he shows up with his wife, well, girlfriend, uh, in a freaking utility, utility kilt, in a kilt. Man code violation, address, in public. Or that's, that was kind of, see, uh, that kind of dinged my man code uh, sensor, you know. So I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to wear a kilt in public. Plus, I do have a wee, wee bit of Scottish in me, in my Heinz 57, uh, Baskin Robbins 101 flavors background. So, gee, I suppose I could justify it that way, but, um, yeah, it, it dinged my man code uh, sensor, and it was like, wow. Now, that's the kind of guy, though, that I just utterly respect. They're just so comfortable being who they are that they can do anything, you know? I want to be like that when I grow up. I'm pretty much there. <sighs> Hope you all are too. May you have sun breaks of your own. Well, if that didn't uh, get your philosophical gears a turning, this morning. one certainly will. Here. Here's our dear Jay talking about, about numerology. And, Let me uh, tell you, folks, this one will really thinking, you know, get you, you, you thinking. You know, Give it a listen. To ginormous numbers, you know, like a billion this and a trillion that, and the country's a trillion dollars in debt, and you know, and he, and he, I mean, you know it's a big number, you know those are big numbers, but it has no, you have no frame of reference, you know, so I started thinking, is there anything in your own life that is even uh, equal or close to where you could say, okay, that's six times, you know, whatever, you know, in my own personal life, so wow, that's a lot, but you know, uh, so I started thinking about that. Like, what what in my own life would even come close to those numbers? And uh, so I started thinking about it. The first thing I thought of was your car <clears throat> and how many times your spark plugs fire. And uh, so, like, I have a V6 and it's four stroke. So if I'm thinking about it right, it fires half the cylinders on every rotation. Got to open thing about that, right? So that's three firings per revolution. Say you're turning 2,000 revolutions per minute, that's 6,000 spark plug fires per minute. Say that, so that's 6,000, say at 60 miles an hour, you know, you can figure out how many, you know, in 100 miles, you know, it's, you know, how many times the explosions take place. But it, that isn't even really that big a number. So I thought, crap. So then I started thinking, okay, what about my position on Earth as the Earth spins? How far do I go? And so I thought, okay, here's, here's what we'll do. I've been making videos on YouTube roughly for about 230 days. It's actually 228 days. We'll say 230 for the sake of making things easier. So in 238, or 230 days, spinning around at my location on the Earth, how far have I gone? So I had to figure out, uh, based off my latitude and longitude, what the circumference of the Earth is at that spot. It's roughly about 17,000 miles. <clears throat> so... Uh, you know, we go around once every 24 hours. So, okay, so I figured that out. It's, it's, I've gone approximately, this is approximate, about 4 million miles. Which is a pretty hefty distance. But it's still not a billion or a trillion or some, one of these crazy numbers you hear. So I thought, okay, in 230 days, how far has the Earth traveled around the sun? That's enough, that, that's got to be quite a distance. So, Figured that out. And that's roughly 370 million miles. Which is still a long ways and a big number, but not a billion or a trillion or one of these crazy ass numbers you hear thrown around all the time. So then I thought, okay, how about how far has our solar system traveled relative to the Milky Way, the galaxy we're in? So I figured that out. And that's roughly about 2.6, 2.7 billion miles. Which is a 
a long way. I mean, I'd love to have that freaking flyer mile plan. Uh, but it's, you know, and we're getting up there. You know, we're getting into the big, big numbers. But we're still, I mean, you think, I, I don't know, the U.S. debt's like a trillion some something. Else. I mean, it's still, that's not even, that's a fraction of that, you know. So I thought, okay, I, I, I'm going to outsmart the whole thing here. How far has our galaxy, Milky Way, traveled since I've started making YouTube videos? And so this gets a little bit sketchy to figure out a little bit, but they have this thing that they can figure out uh, through cosmic background radiation, kind of through, if I understand it right, Doppler shift, sort of, uh, how far we've gone. <clears throat> and so in the time I've been making YouTube videos, relative to just moving through space, using this uh, cosmic background radiation thing as our benchmark, we've gone about 7.2 billion miles. Which still, if you think the difference between 7.2 billion and 1 trillion, it's, it's mind-boggling, the difference. And so, what I came to the conclusion, after traveling down nerd lane here, is when somebody says the word a trillion, it, it's unfathomable how big that number really is. It's, it's just totally crazy how big that number really is. It, it seems hard to believe that number can even exist, especially relative to monetary things. I mean, it's just, I cannot even imagine it. It's just made up. It's just completely made up to me. So then I thought, okay, look, <clears throat> this is all kind of silly and academic, you know, because I don't feel like I'm moving through space. I don't feel any of this. What's something that I can feel that is, like, brings it all home? So I thought, okay. I'm going to be 38 here uh, shortly, okay? So I thought, okay, you're alive for 38 years, right on the dot. How many times has your heart beat in 38 years? So I looked up what the average heart rate is, and it's, you know, it varies. They say between 60 and 100 and all this crap. But let's say my average heartbeat is 60 beats per minute. So how many heartbeats have I had in 38 years? And in that time, it is roughly... 1.2 billion times my heart will beat. It's astounding we are alive. <laughs> I mean, if you think about that, <laughs> I mean, your own heart just clicking away, doing that, I mean, that is insane. So, <laughs> I don't know, but even that isn't close to a trillion, but I mean, that is absolutely bonkers, if you ask me. I mean, it's amazing we are alive. So I guess with that, maybe I should just not give one hairy shit about a trillion dollars. Well, our next dollars. couple of entries are quite quiet. fascinating. And <laughs> um, the first one we uh, are going to introduce you to is uh, O'Toole Rules. Uh, here he talks a little bit about uh, getting some new pipe acquisitions. But you have to see the intro in order to believe it. Check this out. All right, without any further ado, uh, right into it. Um, that one really nice pipe that I had the other day, uh, a couple videos ago, I um, sent that back, got three pipes with the money, and still had money left over. So you will see that I think uh, that pipe was almost too nice to smoke. Um, first off, this is a Wellington uh, estate pipe. It's a WDC. Now I'm wondering if any of you recognize this. Uh, Spaghetti Western fans, uh, I hope, will, will recognize this. It's, it's not a beauty, but I believe this is the almost exact pipe, if not uh, very close. Um, of Lee Van Cleef's pipe in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. This trade will stop at Tucumcari. This trade will stop at And um, now, something a little bit from, different, a little off the beaten path. And this is Bruno Daily Puffer. And this one has to be seen in order to be believed. Uh, here, Bruno is doing some interesting impersonations from James Bond films and other notable British actors. Check it out. Check Bruno out in this video. as I do. 
isn't it when I kill, I kill the king and country? Though I admit, killing you would be just as pleasurable. Would I kill, I kill the king and country? Though I admit, killing you would be just as pleasurable. Come, come, Mr. Bond. Clearly you derive just as much pleasure from killing as I do. As I do. Listen, if you let her go, that'll be the end of it. I will find you, and I will kill you. I was born to do this. I was trained to do this. I'm gonna find you, and I will kill you. I was born to do this. If you let her go, that'll be the end of it. If you let her go, that'll be the end of it. Uh, you listen. Uh, if you let her go, it'll be the end of it. Michael Caine used to talk like this in the 1960s, right? But now his voice has changed. And movies like Get Cutter. Slugs like your Sandra can get away with it, but the dull region of this world can't, can't they? But now his voice has changed and he's more like, my name is Michael Kane. You were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. She was only 50 years old. She was, she was only 50 years old. Shall I get the Batmobile, sir? Every magic trick consists of three parts of H. The first bar is called the bridge. The second bar is called the turn. And the final bar is called the bloody prestige. Shall I get the Batmobile, sir? The, uh, you listen to me good and uh, don't, don't uh, disregard anything about uh, which I'm about to see. Was that a racing novel you were reading there, Mr. Stevens? No, uh, no, it was uh, just a book. Okay, uh, and last uh, but by no means... Can I help you? I say, could you tell me how to get to the cow's bar? It's, uh, that way. Oh, thank you. Our last video, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, is quite entertaining. This one truly had me laughing out loud. Um, this is Jeff. Stogie farts. And he is telling us how SpongeBob saved the day. Take it away, Jeff. How do I approach this subject? And you know what she says to me? She says, Daddy... You're, you have a pipe just like Spongebob. I said, excuse me? She said, yeah, Spongebob, he smokes a pipe. You have a pipe just like Spongebob. So here I was freaking out this whole time, trying to figure out how would I ever approach the subject of pipe smoking with my daughter. And... She's friggin' watching Spongebob on TV smoking a pipe. So now I don't have to worry about telling her anything. In fact, now Daddy smoking a pipe is like old news. It's, it, it, it's not, it doesn't even matter because Spongebob did it first. So I'm just doing what Spongebob did. So I looked at her and I said, you know what? Spongebob gave Daddy this pipe so he can grow big and strong. <laughs> Actually, I didn't say that part. But I just thought it was kind of funny, and uh, I, think, uh, I think everything will be fine as long as, you know, as long as SpongeBob doesn't, you know, shoot heroin or snort an eight ball or something like that, then I'm not going to worry about how cartoons are influencing my kids. But if it wasn't for SpongeBob, uh, they wouldn't... Uh, they wouldn't know about pipe smoking. So I guess that's a good thing that SpongeBob's teaching my kids about smoking pipes. But anyway, just thought I'd share that story with you that I no longer have that burden on my shoulders thanks to our dear friend, Mr. SpongeBob. So that's it. Talk to you later. Well, this has been Father Francis, the Holy Smoking Pipe Padre, saying thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the videos this week. And by the way, just a little program note, my... Uh, Rin Tin Tin uh, video announcing the winner to the Rin Tin Tin contest will be coming up very soon in the next day or two, so please stay tuned for that. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.